Yuli, you actually came. It's been a while. You've gotten taller. Can we talk? We're talking right now. It's cold. So... You left. Joan, that's not fair. You left. Look, Joan, I messed up. You said you wouldn't leave. You said... You said... I don't remember exactly, but you pinky swore. I didn't mean to lie. I just screwed up. After Anna broke up with me, I'm... I'm sorry. I wish words meant anything. I wish this didn't make it harder for you to trust me now. You could have at least called something. Especially after... You know... After my dad. I don't know what to say to that. You're right. I wasn't in a state where I could reach out to anyone. I'm still not. If Nick hadn't died, I never would have come back. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> You're always at least honest. Listen, I, uh, I wanted to talk to you about what happened to Dad. It doesn't make sense. He wouldn't have just crashed. He drove like a grandma, you know that. It's wrong. I don't buy it. I'm just in town for the funeral, Joan. I'm not a PI or a cop. You're the closest thing I can talk to. Will you just look into it, Muley? Please? She wants her father's death to mean something. But where does that lead? What if it leads to the truth? That could change everything. An hour ago, you wanted to run away. Now you want to start another investigation? A few questions won't hurt anyone. Just tonight. To reassure her. And myself. This is a wake. If you poke around, people may end up poking back. Okay, whatever you do, at least leave the kid out of it. It would be cruel to lead her on. Friends don't lie to each other. Even if it means disappointing her again? It's your call. See, so now this here is the two choices. You have the social, which is keep her out of it, or the analytical, which is promised to look into it. So, like I said, this playthrough, we're going to go with the analytical. So whenever we get one of these choices, we're going to go with, I guess, the clue. We're going to assume they're all going to be clue. And then in the second playthrough, if I deem the game worth doing a second playthrough of, or at least worth recording a second playthrough of, we'll do all of the social ones. So this is like the two sides of our character. Uh, but yeah, well. Okay. I'll see what I can see and... All that. Gumshoe it up. You will? You make some good points. It doesn't fit. I hate when things don't fit. Yeah, me too. I might just be, I don't know, crazy or something, but... You want to know for sure. I get it. Thanks, Muley. I, um... I should go in before my mom misses me. You better get in there, too. Can't hide in your car all night. Who says I'm hiding out here? I do. See you inside. <laughs> it's like, kid just won't go into the bar. <laughs>
All right. Journal updated. Might as well talk to Walter. I'll have to sooner or later. Yep, but there's a... Uh... Really, my walk faster? Wow. It's supposed to be a sign propped up against a fence, not over here. Alright. I'm assuming Walter is the guy outside. Bar has changed its logo, the but never changed sign. the name. Reminds me of when Nick and I were still kids. Arcade games were the first friends you had, and Nick Walden was your first real friend. I'm somewhere in between, of course. And it all started here at the Coal Miner's Haven. The bar had an old arcade machine the owner, Mr. Edwards, rescued from some junk heap. You'd spend the whole afternoon there playing Pac-Man until it got dark outside, and the bar filled up with miners craving a cheap drink, and Mr. Edwards eventually kicked you out. You'd beg him to let you stay and play some more, but he thought it was already nice of him to let you in at all. He'd even leave the machine on free play most days. He was a... Oh, wow, this is long... He was a tough guy, an amateur boxer, not big on drunks or underage kids arguing with him when it was time to go home. One day, there was another boy playing Pac-Man at the bar. You watched him play, hoping he'd leave soon. Suddenly, he turned to you and said, My cousin swears there's a magic pill that makes the ghost stay blue forever, but it only appears on the hundredth board, at the center, where the fruit's at. Does your cousin talk a lot of bullshit, you asked. The boy scratched his head like he seriously thought about the answer and finally said, Yeah, all the time, and you both burst out laughing. You played together the rest of the afternoon. Nick beat your highest score, and then you beat his. It got late, and you both got kicked out. That was when Nick invited you over to his place. The next day, Nick waited for you at the school gate. He walked you to the miner's haven like you wanted to make sure you wouldn't run away. You did not then. Of all people I hurt when I left base with, Joan is the one who least deserved it. She was just a kid and my goddaughter, but it's a tough job to be a lonely kid's only friend. I couldn't hack it. Now that her dad died, things aren't going to get any easier for her. Uh, angry, hurt, stubborn. Hard to believe Joan was the one who nicknamed me immediately. Not that I'm looking for an excuse. I made a promise to a child that will break her heart whether I keep it or not. What if she's right about her father's death? What will that do to her? What if I can't give her the answer she's hoping for? Well, here's the thing. She said it didn't make sense that her father just crashed. And if he did just crash... She's going to be relieved that nobody was out to get her father. It'll suck because accidents, you know, that involve somebody dying sucks. But, you know, it was still an accident. That'll help her move past it. If somebody did cause the accident, then that could go either way depending on who that somebody was. Like, if it was somebody else close to her or her dad, that could very well crush her and give her trust issues for life. But if it was... But if it wasn't, then, you know, oh, my dad wasn't being reckless. My dad wasn't being an idiot or something, you know, like somebody made this happen, right? Like, the thing is, is like, if it's an accident, it'll help her move past it for sure. If it wasn't an accident, it really depends what happened as to whether or not it would help her move past. The same town, the same doubts and contradictions, face it or escape it. This time I made a different decision. The temptation to embark on another doomed investigation leading to nothing but pain was too strong to resist. Am I doing this for Joan, for Nick, or for myself? Alright. Let's go talk to, what is his name, Walter? Yeah. Yes. Heavily worn out, she that still looks That smile she had when I gave it to her. She could barely get on it back then. One of Nick's favorite matchups. Might be the first game he'll miss. Harpooners versus Pathfinder, eh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, the cat food is under the sink. Yes, yes it is, Mother. Trust me. Oh, Samuel is here. I'll call you back. Samuel Higgs, as I live and breathe. Has it really been over two years? Regardless, I'm so glad you finally made it. It's good to see you. What kept you? A trip down memory lane. I missed the funeral, but I made it to Nick's wake. You have to bring it in for a hug. It's a basswood back in town requirement. So good to see you. Even if I wish the circumstances were different. I don't know like enough these, about him to determine whether or not. So at least I do. 
I mean, I'll, I guess I'll give him a hug. I don't know what their relationship was before my character left to determine whether or not that's weird. Also, have you spoken to Anna lately? No, why? Um, no reason. If you get the chance, we should catch up. We should really catch up. I'll see you inside. Ugh, I'm not ready for this. Well, it's a good thing you're not in control, Dan. <laughs> Here we go. Seems like your standard small town bar. Mr. Samuel Higgs, big shot investigative reporter. Didn't think you'd ever be back in here. I'd gladly slash your tires, but that mean you couldn't leave town. And you are leaving town right after this, right? Because if you aren't, well, Nick's memory only goes so far. That's what I thought. Come on, it ain't worth it. Making friends already, I see. Declan, been a while. Hey, careful. I'd rather not be working tonight. And you always seem to angry up everyone's blood. I'm only here to pay my respects to Nick. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, shame that. You watch yourself. I think it's time I go put up a photo at the memorial board. That's what people do, right? I didn't know you read Dickens, Ethan. Uh, not really. You just quoted him a couple. How do I cool miners save and drink many? But it, I guess I don't get that. He's owned this bar for almost a decade and it's still can't afford another employee. I mean, it could very well be that, you know, he can't afford another employee, he just doesn't want another employee. I mean, Walter can be overwhelming at times, but he means well. So I had to throw them all out on their ear, and only then did I realize. Ah, Samuel. My favorite ex-muckracker. Join us. Join us. How was the funeral? Wasn't there. Setting up for this. Everyone came. Most of the town, it felt like. A sea of sad, wet eyes. I gave the eulogy. Felt hollow. So hollow. He worked for me for years. For years. My best reporter. What do you even say about him? Um. Remember that article? Something about stoplights? No one cared, but he did. Months of effort. Yield signs. He approached each story with his pen like a knight wielding a sword. It's the small things. Like he always kept his window down. Said cars made him claustrophobic. That's how he stays with us. The little details. I remember the bar bets about that safe spot in Pac-Man. He, he got me one night. Yeah, got me once too. I can't believe it's real. Enough about Nicholas, enough. Tell me, how have you been, Sam? How have you really been? I spend all day doing nothing. I don't even count days, they just blur together. Nick's death barely hit me. It was like a pinprick compared to just everything. Time heals most wounds. Some it just makes worse. Sounds like you need something to pull you out of your rut. Well, I think I've taken enough of your gents' time. Go, mingle, circulate, but you must join us for an actual round later. You must. Yeah, that could be nice. Maybe. We'll see. Think about it, Samuel. A drink with friends is worth a thousand among enemies. I mean, I... 
You should have been the one giving the eulogy, Samuel. No one knew him better than you. You always did know how to start a rush. Declan lacks subtlety, but he loves this town like no one else. Old timers in general already don't like me, and the article just made it worse. Oh, I don't know what article you're talking about. That's where Nick and I sat every time he dragged me out for drinks after work. And now you're just standing there staring at the lady who's sitting there. Sammy! Oh, it's been ages. Is her hair purple or is Sarah? it just like the oh, light me? from the... I've had this stomach thing lately. It's just the light. It's churning. Uh, and this thing with Nick, his car went up like a Sunday ham. He burned alive, you know. Have you met Hugh? He took over the old pharmacy just after you left. Um, no. The infamous Sam. I've read that article you wrote on the mine. You must have put in a lot of legwork on that. It took reading thousands of public records, but a pattern emerged of willful negligence. You are a bulldog. A dangerous man to anyone using power to exploit others. That's nice of you to say. Oh, don't hesitate to drop by the pharmacy sometime. Oh, and Sam, you... But for now, I have a feeling you're not here for us. Oh, oh, right. Don't be a stranger, Sam. Seems like a good guy. Probably the killer then. Bess always had a soft spot for Nick. I think she liked his work ethic. I thought it was four thousand. Pretty courageous of him to try his luck in Basswood, given the state of things. But that amount is damaging in the long term. Oh, we could go to the mine palace at the jukebox. I can't believe this whole thing's still working. It's a very weird mechanic. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Open your eyes and wake up. The kids and I've been busy. And we got a little something for you that's gonna make you smile. yourself down Now you should know how much oh. Nick and I spent so much money on this machine Used by grad bands, Ethan tries to support the local scene. There was no love lost between Kathy and Nick since their divorce, but anyone can see she's taking his death hard. Kathy, uh. Sam, you actually came. I know you two haven't been together for a long time, but I'm still sorry. Well, you hadn't been close in years, but he was my daughter's father. I'll miss him. Joan was really hurt when you left town. Nick and I were never close after the breakup, and Joan's never had a lot of friends. Yeah. Um... Maybe don't break her heart this time when you leave town, all right? Hard to make promises. I don't do well with those in Joan. I've noticed. But 
I'll try. Sam, I'm gonna hold you to that. Let's see what this one unlocks. Or what memory it's attached to. I think there's an achievement for playing Pac-Man, but I don't think you can get it. I think you have to wait until like the next chapter or something when you come back here. You're a lot like Pac-Man, Sam. I consume everything in my path. You find every last bite. The mine closing wasn't your fault. Your investigation just hurried things up. You probably saved some lives, you know. Hi, Dad. Hi, Muley. You piece of Language. Is that a wedding ring? I didn't know you were thinking about marriage. Oh, it's just... It feels like the right thing to do. Dad, what's the point of getting married? Well... It's just one of those things people do, Bug. Here, you can play. Someone has to show you grown-ups. Video games are the realm of the young. Have you talked to Anna about this? That's kind of the point. I'll talk to her about it when I show her the ring. If you say so. Hey, just remember I'm here, right? If you need anything. Anything but my arcade secrets. Those I'll take to the grave. Sorry we lost touch. Sorry I lost touch. Rust off, big guy. This photo always looked weird. Nick could never keep a straight face. He was more her best friend than a dad. I wonder who took that picture. Look at us. Those two were a great team. No, I wanted the... No, I'm not allowed to look at that one. We drove straight to the sea after work on a Friday. Hell of a weekend. Bug was so small back then. Well, babies usually are. Happier times. All right. Samuel! Guess I lost the bet. Bet? Yeah, that bet you'd never come back to Basswood. Not after you went careening out of town like a bat out of hell the instant that article broke bad. That wasn't the reason I left town. Oh, you think it was that girl of yours? <laughs> you left because the town hated your guts. What are you even doing here, Dennis? You and Nick become friends or something? Nope. He thought I was a drunk, which I am. And I thought he was a hack, which he was. This coming from the IT guy. Didn't know resetting passwords could give you a journalism degree. It can. But it does give me less patience for people who sling mud my way. Relax. I'm just playing. <laughs> At least tell me how you've been. If you must know, I still haven't bounced back from when Anna and I broke up. I think you mentioned she broke up with you. Yeah, but I hear you. Yeah, that's how I ended up in this shit town. Chasing a woman. Yeah, then she left and I got stuck here with two kids. Anyway, cheers to Nick. A man that, unlike us, people actually liked. Speaking of which...
feel like that wasn't the end of the song, but... Anna used to play it almost every night. She stopped after her father's accident. Remember when Anna was learning to play the guitar, getting up early to practice before work. It's how you used to wake up, listening to her plucking chord progressions before bringing her coffee. She was happy then, even if that guitar had its own history of sadness and loss, even before today. We never met Anna's mom, and she didn't really talk about her, but the few times she did, it was always about how she loved having music in the house. Her mom used to play old folk songs on her guitar, and the two of them would sing along, sitting cross-legged on the floor on the long afternoons of her childhood. Anna lost her mother when she was a teenager, but even in the following years of grief, conflict, and escape, she held on to her mom's guitar, even though she never learned to play it. Instead, she left Basswood, went to college, and came back a journalist telling stories of her own hometown. Remember the feature she wrote about that old music shop on Gooseneck Hill? Anna took the assignment when no one else wanted it. Her article didn't rescue the music shop from bankruptcy, but the owner came <sighs> to thank her personally. Gave her free lessons as a thank you gift, so sh finally she learned to play. Oh, good God, I have a lot to talk about here, apparently. Dennis is the IT guy at the paper I used to work for. I remember him as a bitter and mean-spirited guy, a loner with not many friends in Basewood. So am I, but it doesn't mean we're kindred spirits. He was new in town, but it seems like he knows how to fit in. Then again, as the town pharmacist, fitting in is part of his job. Still, it's decent of him to have come to next week. Tara, the office administrator at Basewood Jungle, is the proverbial weird co-worker. She likes everyone and everything. Dinosaurs, romance novels, evangelical TV, conspiracy theories, rice cookies. Rice cookies? Uh, unusual street names, you name it, she'd talk about it for hours. My old boss at the paper, I'd say he taught me everything I know, but given my track record, that wouldn't be much of a compliment. I always thought Walter was a decent sort, the rare breed who truly believes his job is to serve the community. Seems old Joker was nicer than I'd expected. With Walter, what you see is what you get. His grief for Nick is sincere. Declan is a local law enforcement. I vaguely remember him from school. He used to get into fights a lot, usually to protect smaller kids. No one was surprised he became a cop. Kathy and Nick marry young and divorce quickly. I'm not sure she's ever really liked me, though I was their daughter's godfather, or maybe that just made things worse. All the miners in Basewood lost their jobs when the mines closed. I know better than to provoke them. A small town bartender who listens more than he talks. Ethan's bar must be the only prosperous business in Basewood. Generally in a small town, yeah, the, uh, the bar is the go-to place. I see that there's actually missing squares on here. Okay, that is actually the exact same thing. All right. Has it really been two years since I saw her? She hasn't changed a bit. Anna? Sam! I've missed you. Why did it take so long for you to darken my doorstep? Because <laughs> he proposed to you and... Well, you I'm here threw now. Him down a well. I'll have to try and come by more often. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Even if not everyone around here would like it. People around here have short tempers. And long memories. But most of them mean well. Sam, the mine was going to close anyways. Maybe in a year or two, five, if the Lord has a sense of humor. It was going to run dry or have an even bigger disaster. It wasn't your fault. Yeah, I mean, I understand that. It doesn't make it easier, though. It's got to make it a little easier. When my father lost his legs, nobody knew the mine wasn't following regulations. You were the only one who started asking questions. Whenever people talk about you, he always says, you did the right thing. Yeah, well, your dad's Joe. He's an oak, unmoving and annoyingly supportive. <laughs> It wasn't just him. Nick thought your piece was great. He was actually jealous. He always wanted to write something that shook the pillars of heaven, as he used to put it. You know, Nick and I had moved in together. It started to get serious. 
But I think it's only now I realize how much I cared for him. Wait, you and Nick started going out? When did this happen? A few months ago. He... He never told you? He asked me to let him be the one to say something. You two had been so close. He probably tried. I hadn't been answering his calls. Ah. Uh, that's the worst part, right? Anything broken just stays broken now. But this... This was all nice. The funeral, the wake... Walter did a good job. But it all just makes me feel... heavy. It makes my heart hurt. Like Nick's memory has been laid on top of me and I'm still... carrying him. Nick's death. Do you know if he had any... enemies? Working on anything dangerous? Whew. Now this is a real can of worms. This is a wake. I know that. Do you? This isn't the time to be digging and pushing. You always do this. You always... I... I get it. I just... You... You're still you, huh? You'll always still be you, Sam. I hope you never change, but I can't handle this right now. I'm gonna go home. I hate that his stuff is all over my house. Then drink and cry all night. You do what you need to do. See you around. Samuel, come, have a round with me. I need a drink or two, or three, and then That's I'll go. The guy who got the mine closed. I can't believe he showed up. It does look tempting. Drown your sorrows with Walter. Anna and Nick talk about cliches. The moment I left base with my best friend and my ex got together. Maybe I could have handled that better. Asking probing questions about Nick's death didn't go down well either. One conversation I've already disappointed Anna again. I mean, it wasn't the moment you left base with. She said that they had been going out for a few months and you've been gone for two years. So, I mean, a cliche would have been literally if it had happened. So, Nick wasn't drunk, and me? I was drunk as a skunk. Ah, Samuel, 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 join us. We were just sharing stories about dear Nicholas. And let me get your next round. Maybe Ethan has a suggestion for a worthy spirit? Well, spirits? Oh, no, no, friends drink beer. Yes, I suppose that's fitting. To dear Nicholas. Yeah, he'd been coming in a lot lately. Sat right there, with a bad dad joke or two. <laughs> with friends, I guess? Maybe Anna. Oh, by himself with his laptop as his date. He never drank alone. You two were close though, right? Tell me about the man outside the bar. He had a terrible memory. Couldn't remember names, dates, passwords. Kept his notes squirreled around him like a horde. He was always good with Joan, though Kathy did the heavy lifting. Took her to school, fed her, clothed her, and Nick would pick her up. Play dad for a few hours, mostly she'd just sit in the office drawing. And he'd drop her back off with her mom after dinner. Greater men have done far less by their daughters. The friend of man, the friend of truth. The friend of age, and guide of youth. Few hearts like his with virtue warmed, few hearts with knowledge so informed. If there's another world, he lives in bliss. If there is none, he made the best of this. Burns, that from your eulogy? You know Robert Burns? And no, just something I keep on hand for toasts. Well, it's a good choice. And sorry about that, Sam. I wasn't trying to bring you down. Everyone liked him. I think even Dennis liked him somewhat. He always had a lot of friends. A few who couldn't make it sent flowers. How's the family taking it? Joan and Kathy seem shaken. 
Kathy has a lot to deal with, now more than ever. But who could prepare for losing a parent? Not a soul. Not a single soul. It always seemed so easy for him. Every day he'd show up, smile, no matter what. Of the qualities in a good man, that one deserves to be at the top. Not a quality I possess. This isn't a place for self-pity. This is a place for dour reflection. Yes, and drinking. All right. To Nick, he was my friend. He will be missed, but not forgotten. Here, here. Putting it down. Kathy, what's your underage child doing drinking? You have no control over her? Ethan can lose I his wasn't license. doing anything. Don't touch me. Joan. Leave me alone. Oh, you guys are all so, so stupid. You do not talk to people that way. She clearly does. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. She's just so, so... That was quite heavy-handed. I hope the little one doesn't take it to heart. Uh, God, I can barely read that one on the right. Declan was harsh. Ca harsh. Kathy was harsh. Uh, Declan was a little harsh. I'll send her a text. Make sure she's going to be okay. I say I'm becoming a drink, but I see the bartender walking by but not handing me anything. Oh, there it is. What a night! I'd say that went well. Ish. You got to chat with everyone you've been avoiding. Even if Joan got inside your head with her whole dad mystery death thing. Just shut up. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. You're the one in the driver's seat, Sam. I can't make you do anything. Deep down, you've been looking for a reason to come back. <sighs> it's gonna be one of those long nights inside your head, huh? Stop. Stop pushing me. Stop always poking at me. You just won't quit. I'm trying to help. And helpful tip number 602. Beer doesn't solve any of this. You're back out in the world. Feeling emotions, fitting in. That's progress. Fuck the world. Pointless talking and more talking and no one says what they mean. Go away. Let me enjoy being miserable. Just try and make sure you don't do anything stupid. No promises. Oh, and that must be the end of chapter two. So we'll call it there and return to the main menu. All right, so that's chapter two. We navigated the wake. We uh, did piss off Anna, but I mean, that's not a surprise. Uh, so, another short-ish chapter. A little bit longer than the last one, I feel. Oh, definitely longer than the last one. Uh, the next one looks... Honestly, the next one looks like it's even shorter than this one was. Um, how many chapters did I say there was? Like six, seven? Six, six seven... 
Yeah, there's looks like there's seven chapters. Uh, so I mean, but to be fair, like I said, chapter three, like our next video doesn't look like it's gonna be very long, but chapter four looks like it's a fairly lengthy one. So I may want to do some extra recording next week so that I got a little bit more time on Saturday to uh, to do the next part of this. But thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next Sunday where we find out just how bad of a hangover we have and maybe start our investigation into next step.